Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Oh, I thought we were doing it later. Okay. I just tried now. The Great Gatsby Cheers. Why are we doing a Great Gatsby style cheers, Rachel? Because this episode of Smart Money Happy Hour, we're talking about old money versus new money. Who will win? It's the great showdown. It is the great showdown. That no one ever talks about. Yeah, and you know, like the old money aesthetic is very in right now, like the coastal grandmother style. People are going back to like the old school ways of life, George, That's true. it feels like, style-wise. Do we cover what the show is, Rachel? Do people know already? Mm, Do mm-hmm. they know? I assume they know. It's not their first rodeo. It might be their first rodeo. If yeah. it is, this is a show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about, including pop culture, current events, and money. I just got a mouthful of sugar. So good. Mm -hmm. And we do it with a drink in hand, which just makes it more fun. Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about that old money versus new money. And we may be millennials, but we love a good TikTok trend. Yeah. And this is one of them that's been popping up. And so we thought, let's talk about it. And it goes way beyond just aesthetic. This is like a cultural war, Rachel. Yep. It's happening. It is happening. Now, we do recognize that old money has a lot of connotations around it, right? There's there's some weight to that term. Yes, and there's a lot of dialogue and conversations happening, which are really important. But for this purpose in this episode, we kind of go more the pop culture routes. uh, And how it affects your money. Your money, yeah. So that's kind of the angle we're taking with this episode. And we are sipping on a lemon drop. This is a great classic Mm -hmm. old school drink. I would say old school wet martini. It's a martini, uh, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's what helps us channel the Gatsby vibe, which have you seen the movie with Leo? <sighs> I have not, but I know the meme you're talking about. So give me the You've cheers. You've seen the meme. Okay, so you have to hold it. Oh, he holds yeah, it like that. That's an under hold. Which is not. And then it's kind of a smarmy, very a little, confident. A little, uh... <laughs> it's good. It's good. There we go. I don't want to spill it. Please don't. It's too good to spill. So we're going to talk about what is in this drink, how to make it, and what it costs at the end of the episode. So stick around for that. All right. So let's dive in, George. So old money. What's the difference between old money versus new money? What is it? Our our friends at Google say that old money represents generational wealth, money that has been passed through generations in the form of cash, investments, or property. New money refers to self-made millionaires and billionaires who earned their money during their lifetime. So I'm thinking about like the old school families, the Kennedys, the Vanderbilts versus like entrepreneurs, celebrities who they didn't come from money. That's right. But now they have millions. Well, and here at Ramsey, we talk a lot about generational wealth and changing your family tree and about being intentional with your money and how important that is because... That not just changes your life, but those habits that your kids or your community, your family is seeing is habits that can be passed down. And also, if you invest and all that, then you would have money to continue to pass down generationally. Yeah, I think we should all aspire to eventually, they're going to look back at my roots and go, old money, because George invested wisely and passed it down generationally. Yeah, and we've done this for over 30 years here at Ramsey, so we have a lot of surveys and stories and testimonies of people doing this. And a lot of the millionaires we find are first generation. They are new money. I think it's like 79%. Which that's really encouraging. Yeah, we're given nothing. So Because people think, well, if I didn't come from money, I'll never have money. That's right. But there's a lot of new money out there. So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about both. But uh, the old money aesthetic is very popular People are right dressing now, the part, Rachel. Which is so funny. So it's a style trend going on and it kind of embodies the socialite lifestyle of Gossip Girl and the talented Mr. Ripley. So it's very opposite of like California rich. So like they it's say. not Kardashians. Not Kardashian. No, it's not selling sunset. It's none of that. It's a very classy. I tend to lean old money in my fashion. Uh, when they said, when they said gossip girl style, I was like, oh yeah. I You understand that at a deep core level. I really do. I'm just picturing Martha Stewart. It's a little like, bit of that. The there's a there's a level there, yeah. But I, I go more I go more there. Which we call personally. now coastal grandmother. You've heard this term? Uh, not until researching for this episode. It's a big trend, and I'm a little upset that Coastal Grandfather is not a trend. <laughs> I think I'm going to start that <laughs> as I get older, wear a lot of shawl collar cardigans. <laughs> shawl collar. You sound like Sean Connery when you say it. You can't <laughs> not. Shawl collar cardigans. <laughs> and you got to talk like that with a kind of a transatlantic it's accent, a very, Rachel. Uh, 
Yeah, it's pretty, that's pretty so, powerful. But what's interesting is how this affects people's spending habits. So it ties in with debt and this comparison culture because new money, you know, it's all about dressing well and being very showy with your wealth, you know, designer handbags, heavy makeup, flashy watches, the... The jewelry, the nice the cars. Track suits, there's a lot of Tiny that, yeah. dogs inside of purses. You've seen it. <laughs> You've seen You've it. done it probably. No, not that one. You haven't one. put June in your purse yet? Nope. Nope. Dang. Negative. Missed opportunity. Negative. <laughs> Have you put your dogs in a purse? Why would I be carrying around a purse? <laughs> The question number one of many. Has Whitney. No, but when Olive was a puppy, we could have done it. We definitely, there was moments. You thought about it. Yeah. You thought about it. There was it. a photo shoot. There was a photo shoot. So, yeah, more than 75% of millionaires we surveyed in our national study of millionaires spend less than $150 per wow. month on clothing. So the people that you see driving the nice cars, they may be secretly drowning in debt. Yes. That's interesting. Because you assume, well, they have nice stuff. They must be wealthy. Yeah, Not wealth the today case. is like very fuzzy. We, we've seen no idea. studies that show you can make $250,000 and still live paycheck to paycheck. Oh, for sure. But look like you're making even more than that because of everything you're spending and the amount of debt. So Yikes. it's a tricky uh, comparison road that people walk down. So you definitely, we are all about spending with cash living below your means, all of that. So. Is there anything, Rachel, that you know wealthy people splurge on that you would never pay for? You could never bring yourself to do it. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know why a sailboat came in my head. That Ooh, wealthy people. My head went yacht. I feel like yachts. <gasps> Ooh, you wouldn't do a yacht, though? I would do, I would do that over a sailboat. This is probably way more. I would <laughs> rather, like, I'd rather know a guy with a yacht. It just feels like a lot of maintenance. Okay, yeah, but my thing is, but if you have the money and people just fix it for you, wouldn't Fair that, point. I take that it back. Be okay? I'm buying a yacht, Rachel. I, <laughs> Thank you for encouraging me. You're so welcome. But I will say boating, designer stuff. Like the idea of spending a thousand dollars on a purse or so, it just yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. Even if I had millions of dollars and I'm just See, like, mine whatever. is less about the bag. What's funny to me is like the clothes. Because no one knows what the label is. Like your shirt right now could be um, I Gucci go or whatever. Botch. It could be TJ Maxx. It could, you, but you don't know. Like I look at that shirt and I'm like, I don't know. And maybe old money people know. But well, there's a word because a that. bag. At least I see the bag and I'm like, oh yeah, it's recognizable. Yeah, like that's a Celine bag or like that's a really nice bag because you. But a, but clothes people have no idea. So it's, mine's clothes. I think there's a term. It's like stealth wealth or hidden wealth where wealthy people. They keep it real casual. Yeah, they don't care. That feels like old money to and me. I, that is, yes. I respect that. I respect that too. Okay. For sure. So so watch out for that comparison culture because it can lead yes. to a road but Can, can you talk debt. about when it is okay? Because I don't want to be like, it's dumb to buy things and you shouldn't have stuff. That's great. I don't yes. want to be that guy. No, and you just were with a bag, but that's okay. I still, on. I will die on that hill. I will die in the bag hill. We'll keep moving on. But uh, I- It's a bag. Yeah, if you're on baby step seven, so the Ramsey plan, that means you have no debt, your house is paid off, your kid's college fund is funded, uh, you are funding retirement, like all the bases are covered. And you're at that point where you're like, okay, I have no debt. I have savings in the bank and I can, yep, just enjoy. So there's a level there, but you always, always still want to live below your means. That's a good so, call. We're not against stuff. We always say it's okay to have nice stuff. Don't let your nice stuff have you. And when you do with payments, it has you. Yeah, it has you and your happiness and your joy. I think a lot of this world that we're talking about with all the new money, old money, That's I think so there's true. a level of our world that just consumes thinking that it's going to identify them. There, Something is going to be fulfilled. That's a good point. Ultimately, and, and it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't. So let's hit on old money here. This style shows up in a lot of movies we've seen. Any good Diane Keaton movie? at least vaguely, smells of old money. <laughs> yes. um, any other movies or TV shows uh, that you think like this has Crazy the Rich Asians. Yes. Like, there's just classic. Like you, like, I mentioned Great Gatsby. Yeah, that's a good one. The 1920s elite vibe. Yes. I think Clueless could have a level of like an old money feel. I could see that. Yeah. You know, but the you know new what has old money vibes? What? Is the new series, the Knives Out series with Daniel Craig. I have 100% seen it. old money vibes. Really? Yes. Haven't seen a lot it. of lot of like turtleneck kind of sweaters, but tasteful. Yeah. tasteful. A lot of people who are like, what do these people do for a living? They don't seem to work, but they have ton tons of money. Yeah, that's, that's old it. Money. That's old money vibes. Where new money to me is like selling Sunset Kardashian. Hundred percent. It's very flashy, very like this on trends, not timeless because of what they're going to wear and all that. It's going to be out of style. And I feel months. like I'm. I, I feel like you would lean new money as far as like you're keeping up with the trends. Oh really? Because I feel like I'm old money. No, because I remember you walked oh, in. Man. 
and you didn't have like skinny jeans on. You're like, oh, skinny jeans are out. We're doing the like cropped mom jean now. Yeah, and I, I was like, no one told me. <laughs> I refuse to let go of skinny jeans. So I feel like you are, you're pretty yeah. on trend. But I would do that my with, wife a, is too. with a sweater though. Sure. Very basic stuff. Yeah. Maybe I'm in in between. But I'm know. just, I'm timeless, Rachel. I'll wear this shirt 80 years from now. I'm not going to grow. <laughs> like the doctor says there's hope, but we all know. We all know what's happening. It's a farce. <laughs> so I like this. So there's tons of song references that reference old money and new money. Did you know this? <gasps> Taylor Swift yes. is one of them. Yes. Sing it. New money. No, I can't. Suit and tie. You don't have to sing it because Taylor read you generally like doesn't magazine. sing. She just like Stop that. talks I on just pitch. saw Air. I saw videos of Eras, her new her new tour. She had her like one of her first stops Heard it was amazing. all over. And she is belting it out. I'm so proud of her. Vocally, she's a great singer. Vocally, she's done great. I'm a big T-Swift fan. Let me make that very clear before the Swifties come after me. But her songs tend to be like, new money, suit and tie. Here you go. That's literally how it sounds. I'm not mad at that. But new money is the first lyric right there. Yep. Which means. And if you're a Hamilton money. fan, which did you see Hamilton in the theater? No. I just I feel like going to the theater is old money. <laughs> you know? Have you gone to the it's theater? A vibe. Have yeah, you if you're a Hamilton the fan. Aaron Burr flaunts his trust fund baby status to try to win over Angelica. Ah, oh, I've heard that's a great show. You should And go. I love Broadway. I love Wicked. Should, I love it all of it. Out of all people, you would I love know. it. I know. I don't know why I haven't because I love history. I love politics. Well, you've been busy. You there's know, just, with kids and such. And there's just things happening. Charles in his queen size bed. There's not a lot of time. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff happening. Okay, but now what people are talking about again because hobbies are associated with old money versus new money. Oh, this yeah. is fun. So like golf, tennis, boating, all of that. You lean happen. old money if you're into yeah, those hobbies. Yeah, that's the vibes of old money. For sure, and I'll say that they're they're pretty they're pretty proud of it. Very. Um, but new money. Have you met people that like to play tennis and do boating? Is uh, it do boating? Ten- Is that I, the term? I don't know. We boat. I love a boat. I do. do. Producer Lindsay but this, loves but a boat. We we do, do boats on Tennessee lakes. Boating sure. by old money. That's a different. That's a different yeah. scale. But even golfing, like I've tried. I have a set of clubs I got for fifty bucks, and it just oh, feels no. like it's a, it's not for me. I know it does feel like an old money, old man slash old money sport. Old man, old money. But what's funny is new money. It can be, you know, kind of poked at. So Titanic. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this? Where Rose's mom was like, "Oh yes," to Kathy Bates's character. She was like, "She's new money." And then Kathy Bates' character took Leo kind of under her wing. Yes. And helped him do like Showing the old the money. Ropes. Yes. But they like turned their noses up at her because yeah. she was new money. There's a lot of snootiness in both worlds. I think we can yep. admit that. I think that's fair. So as we're talking about this, Rachel, I got to know, what is one shameless splurge or social behavior that you might indulge in to make that would make the old money crowd cringe? Like what's like a new money thing you oh, could see yourself cringe. doing? Oh my gosh. Uh, I think the the old money crowd would cringe at us driving Teslas. Oh, that's probably true. Because it's not like a Mercedes or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. They want like old the money The electric class. car. Yeah. I would say that. I would say like the new like cool part of town. Oh, where yeah. Where they're like, no. Versus All the established the, really, the established part, part. That would be a thing. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's a great question. Where would they cringe? A shameless splurge or social behavior? I think I would always ask, like, what do you mean? And they're like, I summer here. I'm like, what does that mean? That's an annoying one. I mean, that's it's annoying. the way they talk sometimes. Stop. Do we doing know that. a lot of these though? I don't really. I I'm, did have one girl that I know, and she did say, "Well, I I summered." Da 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 da. She used it as a verb, and I was like, oh, "Wow, we may not be good friends." If you use summer as a verb, <laughs> you are old money. I think we can uh-huh. all agree on that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, there's a lot of or this. Or New England. No, you're Boston. You would know. I am from Is it Boston. more of that, though? I feel like it's a culture thing. I'm just so Southern. Let's be honest. I didn't grow up in the in the old money crowd in Boston. I know. But is that, would summering be more of a verb in the Northeast? Yes. Versus, I feel like that's well, true. Well, old money, traditionally, there's a lot of Northeast roots That's true. To that. That's fair. When that's you think fair. about Cape Cod, you know, yes, New Martha's York Vineyard. City. Martha's mm-hmm. Vineyard. That's the place oh, that happened. man. kind of wish I was old money right now. Doesn't You'll get there. that nice? One day. <laughs> One day when, you know, you're I'd a thousand years old. I'd love to go on Martha's old, Vineyard. Your great-grandkids would be like, oh, my grand, my great-great-great-grandmother, Grandmother, who Rachel still Cruz. dressed in pearls and always wore her sweaters. Pearls are the, old money. Till the day she died. I like pearls. I think they're classy. And that's a Southern, like, sorority girl thing, too, when I was in school. Agreed. But. Well, Nashville's got a lot of this going on. A lot of old money, a lot of new money, because when you think about the new money vibes from country artists, we got yeah. a lot of those. 
you know, they're from small towns. They made it big. Totally. A lot of them didn't come from money. Some did. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift might be a mix. Her family had money. No, they had a Christmas tree farm in Pennsylvania. They had a Chris. I didn't have a Christmas tree farm. Okay. <laughs> it, wasn't like saying, a, it wasn't like a fun addition to their life. That was like their job. Sure. I think she kind of came blue. I think it was a little bit like, yeah, no, I wouldn't okay. say that. Fine. You can but disagree. I do think it is funny because some of the stars, like country music artists, like, and I like have seen them on social media or their wives and stuff. You can tell like, oh yeah, that's a new money vibe versus in Nashville, you have like your Bell Mead, you have your private oh. schools like Harpeth Hall, Reese Witherspoon went there, your MBA. Like, like you have the generational- Is that just a tagline? Reese Witherspoon went here? Yeah, I feel like that's a big deal. Uh, MBA is where uh, Dead Poet Society was based off of Robin Williams. I had no idea. You didn't? Yeah, that was MBA out of Nashville. What does MBA stand for? Uh, Mama's Boy Academy. That's what we always <laughs> called it in, oh! in high school. <laughs> Shots have been fired. So we called it in high school. Montgomery Bell. Academy. Montgomery Bell Academy. Yeah, but it's fair. I mean, it, and it's I think those at Innsworth are like the priciest private school. So, wow. anyways, but but th- those would tend to lean. Yeah. An all boys school, all girls school, right? That tends to lean more old money. Well, at any time, I, I Vanderbilt University. I mean, it just feels old money. It does. Yeah. When you see the, that word, I mean, that's a nod to the Vanderbilt family. So Railroad tycoons. Yeah. Again, if you were a tycoon, that's old money. That's old money. Okay, so here's what's fun. I love you, it. You ever I'll, play the game growing up? No. Nope. Roller coaster tycoon. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> that's old money. That's old. No, that's that's new old. Money. They got that roller coaster money. It's a roller coaster tycoon. They ain't got that kind of money. I have forgotten. About that. That That's, was the best game ever. That is so funny. It always looked better on the commercials. I like remember the commercial. Was that like firing up the AOL trial disc to get that oh, going? For I forget sure. like what era Golly, that was. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Tycoons. Thank you. Cheekwood. Thanks for bringing that Beautiful, back. Beautiful uh, gardens and estate yep. built in the 30s. And the Cheek family's Maxwell House coffee fortune. That's the same oh, family. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there it's like go. Nashville's little uh, mini Biltmore. Okay, let's which go really old. Biltmore, more old money. Are you ready? How really much old. older can you go? Catherine the Great. Don't a know Russian her. monarch in the 1700s. <laughs> she inherited and controlled a lot of land and family investments. Today, it would have been worth $1.5 trillion. What's the face, George? You don't believe it? I mean, how many followers does she have on TikTok? I'm just not super impressed. Caesar Augustus would be worth $4.6 trillion. Hold on. Golly. These are like trillionaires. Do we have any trillionaires today? I don't think there's no. a trillionaire. But here's my thing. It, you, there is Savannah. Savannah on our team is a trillionaire. She's just here for fun. She's just here for her. Here's hobby. my thing. Like, of course, if you base inflation from like 3000 BC to today. Why is mil- that an of course? But because if you looked at my net worth 4000 years from now, we'd be like, the man was a trillionaire in today's <laughs> money. I feel like that's unfair. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm not unimpressed by Caesar. I want him to know I love his salads. But I'm not impressed with the money that would have been today, thousands of years later. That's a lot of stuff, though. That's a lot. Yeah. Genghis Khan. You been to Genghis Grill? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) The guy's got that franchise money. Oh, no. (laughs) Rachel's like, is that on the paper? (laughs) I literally was like... (laughs) Make it? No, Genghis Khan, he created the largest empire of all time in China and Central Asia. And estimated net worth, Rachel, what would it be today <laughs> based on inflation? Tell us. 120 trillion. 120 trillion. Tr- 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 but here's what's crazy about him. His Mongol empire was so wide-reaching, his DNA can be found in an estimated 16 million men today. What? That is insane. That means like... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, who can rival that other than Nick Cannon himself? I don't know. That's impressive. The stats on that are impressive. Oh That's my all I'm gosh, saying. it's a lot. 16 million. It's a lot. So then, the, what does this 23 and me look like? Let's move to America. Okay. So you got the. Let's you got move, the, let's listen, move to you got America. The Van, you got the Vanderbilts. You got the Kennedys. You know, you got all those oh, people. Yeah. So there's like the American wealth for sure. For sure. See so. the Kennedys accent. That's old money. If you have yes. that accent, you're old money. Yeah. And like Maria Shriver, Kennedy. Oh. Who married Arnold Schwarzenegger, but they divorced. Uh, Taylor Swift actually dated Connor Kennedy back in the day. What? Yep. They were they were seen on a sailboat. Google image it. They were boating, Rachel. They were boating. I know. I know. They were summering in Martha's Vineyard yep. while boating. So yeah, so there's there's just a lot of old money in our in our world today. But I think that like honestly, you know, good for them. But the good question, for them. Good for them. 
but the, but my uh, encouragement would be that you can start a trend with your own life and money now. That's but would true. you pass it on? I think I would, but I wouldn't do it in a way where the, the kids were super aware. Like, I want to live my life in such a way that my kids are like, I don't know if he has a million dollars or $50 million. I've got no clue. Oh, but you're still in the millions, George. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not going to—I mean, I have no aspirations of even becoming a billionaire, Rachel. No, I was saying, though, like, millions, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So that's great. But I do think there's there's a level of, you know, entitlement that can come with generational wealth that's hard to push back against. I mean, as you raise your kids, even the way, like, I'm living now is very different from my parents and sure. their parents. Sure, And that's hard because, you know, Charles is in a queen-size bed. Oh, my God. And so how do you raise your kids? And you have anecdotal evidence of this. As you raise your kids, how do you kind of push back against that entitlement? Yeah, uh, we've talked about it a lot because it just is can, hard. Because you guys can afford to like get them toys and do. Sure. Back in the day, it was like we can't afford that. Now it's like I it's say, not in the budget. I say that though, and I tell them like that costs money. Charles, speaking of in his queen size bed, he ripped off like his book. He like has a ton of books, and he like shredded half of them. And I told him I was like, "You're not buying. Like we're not buying." Wow any more of this and he, and he said which I appreciated at three years old he goes cost money he said that and I was like oh, well, this is the same child who said mommy just Amazon Don't it. He just say that too. <laughs> he's brilliant but he said cost money and I was like that's right and we don't ha- we don't have that and we'll tell the girls that and it's so funny because we're like wow we just don't have the money for that mm. and it's good for them I'm like because you need to be yeah it's not yeah. it's not a free free for all you can't do that. But I, I still want to leave an inheritance to my children's children, as Proverbs yeah. says. That's a big that's a big thing for me. Okay, but it but is here's hard my, to do it in the right way. I know. And here's what I'm a little bit challenged with, because I think that scripture, I'm not a theologian, but I do the think context. the inheritance can be like knowledge. Here's yes. how you can build it. And I almost wouldn't want, I mean, uh, again, handing cash over. There's a part of me that's like, oh, I, would, I think I would rather leave like assets. Oh, yes. You know like what I'm a saying? real estate portfolio versus like, here's $20 million in cash. Do right. what you want with it. I mean, kind of. Because I want my kids to have dignity, right? That they have That's to fair. work and pay their bills, like yeah. all of that. So it's a it's a very, very uh, thin line. I think that's really hard, the, the right? the goal is you want to keep the ball in the air. You want to keep that money alive for multiple generations. Yeah, and I think it's awesome if it's like, yeah, maybe you— because I've seen a, a big trend right now on social media is if you have a kid, buy a rental property. Oh, I've seen this video. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's everywhere. People and it's send like, it to me all the time. Yep, and when they're 18, you can sell it, use that for their college fund, or they can keep it and live in it, and then you make the— like Right, so people are trying to like do all this maneuvering. Yep. Um, but I'm like, yeah, that is something that's awesome. That's like, yeah, instead of having a mortgage payment and you pay for 50% of their first house or their, you know, even yeah. buy their first house and they have to invest their own money, the mortgage payment, and invest it and oh, it makes them money. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. there's, I don't know, I feel like there's smart ways to go about it that's still, they still have skin in the game. Like, they still have to go yes. and make money and work because boating 12 months a year probably doesn't bring a lot of, I don't know, fulfillment, maybe. But we should. Sounds pretty good. If you have a boat, call me. We, we should try it. <laughs> but there is a level of privilege that we have to just acknowledge and go like, yes, there is privilege in your parents having handled money the right way or having it. And it does lead to a life with less money struggle. Yep, for sure. And so I want to create a sense of privilege without a sense of entitlement for my kids. Yeah. That's Ooh, the goal. That's good, George. You know? That's good. Yeah. We put this very negative spin on on privilege in general. Right. But it's like, why wouldn't you set your kids up for success? Like, why would you want them to struggle and want them to be in debt? So yeah. I want them to earn it, but earn I don't want it. them I to know. struggle. Because there's in the sense of like being in debt for 20 years. Right. To right. hopefully retire with dignity. But I also don't want to hand them $20 million and just go, you never have to try in life. That's it. Have fun. Yes, I know. Because so there's, there's this something about the between. struggle. It's this, that struggle of like, oh, gosh, we have to choose this or this. Like, right? Decisions that have to be made. And I don't know. I feel like, oh, that's really good. So I don't I don't know. Yeah. Talk to me in 50 years. It's a, it's a good conversation. I don't know that anyone has it figured out. And I'm sure there's a lot of opinions out there about it, what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah, because also there's a beautiful thing of like passing on generosity and showing your kids what money can do mm. to help people and like fund things that you're passionate about as a family. Like all of that, that's a very real part of money that can be very powerful. So bringing that into the conversation. Right. It goes beyond key. money. I mean, there's there's character 
integrity that gets passed down as well. Yes. And that's far more important. Yeah, I think than so. Than a dollar amount. Yep, for sure. Good conversation. Yep, but uh, but it is interesting because Bill and Melinda Gates have chosen to donate majority of their wealth so their kids will inherit less than 1% of their $130 billion fortune. So they get $10 million each. That's still that's still plenty of money. You said 1% of 130 billion. Less than is what it says. 99% But to me, a, I'm like, okay, that, like, I don't 0.99% of $130 billion. We're still talking about a billion dollars. But think about what that money, what do you think about $130 billion, what it's going to do? We can debate the giver of, of Bill Gates on another on another podcast. That's such an unreasonable amount of money to me that I'd, I would have yeah. no clue how to spend it. Well, and they don't, yeah, and you can't. I don't think you could spend that in a lifetime. Uh, Maria Osmond says that she's not leaving her kids anything. She told Us Weekly, individuals who are handed money often end up lacking drive and ambition, and she wants her kids to discover their own interests and meaningful career. I respect that. Yeah, I do too. I think that's great. But also, leave nothing? Like, that is a little bit like, oh, man. Yeah. Could you have done something, Murray? Well, I mean, I'm thinking, yeah, she could have, <laughs> but she's chosen to say, mm, I, want th- I want them to struggle a little bit. Now, she's not leaving them in a bad position. Hopefully, you raise your kids in such a way that they know the value of hard work and they have character and integrity yeah, and all yeah. these important values. But as far as money goes, we know based on stats that anyone can become a millionaire in America today if they stop being, you know, playing the debt game and going, well, I want to be showy. I want to compare myself to others. Sure. It's, and a, so, long, it's a long game yeah. of investing now, and all that. Now, playing the yeah. billionaire game is a different game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not going to happen in your 401k. Do you know there's only like just a little over 3,000 billionaires in the world? Wow. That's not a lot. That is shocking. Mm-hmm. Now, millionaires, I imagine that number I think is, is, a in, lot. Yeah. is in the millions. Um, but the billionaires, it's just a few, it's a, a little over 3,000. Yeah. But we've made it so normal because now it's like- Isn't that funny though? I, I thought like it would have been more. 10, 20 years ago, I couldn't name like billionaires other than Bill Gates. Yeah. Now it's like, well, pick your poison. There's a lot. And so the times have changed. But it also gives me faith in the American economy. Uh, So before our guilty as charged segment, Lindsay is going to give us a list of phrases. And we have to say old money versus new money. Is that the game? Which one does this fall under? What category? I can't wait. Okay. Okay. Wearing designer items with flashy logos like Louis Vuitton or Gucci. New. New. Correct. Using nouns as verbs. Where do you summer? Does your family boat? Old Old money all day long. (laughs) Um, Openly talking about money and the prices of things. Oh. That's a new money thing. I feel like that's new money. I feel like it'd be faux pas and old money. We don't talk about that. We don't even look at price tags. Yep, you're correct. Nice. Um, Handwritten thank you notes. That's old money. Old money. Yeah. New people just would like DM you. (laughs) Um, Driving a Range Rover. New, new. Money. Yep. Is it new? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Repairing and taking extra care of possessions slash family heirlooms. Old money. Old. You're correct. Heirloom right. is an old money word. <laughs> yeah, that's saying. true. All right, last one. New construction homes as opposed to older homes. Oh, new, new. money. Yep. It's in the it's in the name. New construction. New construction. Yeah. yeah. You're correct. That's it. Wow, we nailed it. Ten, we out, did. ten All right. out of ten. New money versus old money. It's a real thing, y'all. It is it's a real. real thing. But here's the here's the deal. Regardless of what, I, this is not picking sides here. We're just showing both sides of the coin. Yeah, it's fun. But I would have a goal to build wealth for the future, regardless of what stage I'm at. I don't, you know, obviously we can't take anything to the grave. But while I'm here, I want to be a good steward of what I was given yes. to manage. I would agree with that. And yep. that means living on a budget, staying out of debt, raising my kids in such a way to where they carry on the wealth. They yes. carry on the character, the integrity. A great picture of old money and new money to me, Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart's relationship. <laughs> I mean, it's is that per- not new money and old money coming together pair. in perfect harmony? It's the perfect pair. Oh, Love my it. gosh. All right. So it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every yep. week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip of the cocktail. All right, Lindsay. All right. I'm ready at the helm. Have you ever tried out someone else's products when you were in their bathroom? Oh. <gasps> I can confidently say no. I don't think I've ever done that. Like a friend or nobody? Okay. Like Products. Uh, no, I don't know. Not without them knowing. I or mean, like, like your parents? 
Oh. Have you tried Sharon's? And like oh, you did okay. tell her? Yeah, you know what? Yes, I have with my mom. Is she a pawns woman? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought that was a thing all women knew. Pond's cream. Yeah, pond's cream. Whitney has pond's no. cream. Okay, good for And I was her. like, I thought this. <laughs> Is that old money? It's an old money cream. Okay, no, but mom, like, perfume. Yeah, I have, I have used my mom's stuff. She may be the only one, though. Way to go, Sharon. Okay, what about you? <laughs> you know what? I have used my, my dad had, like, the old school Old Spice Cologne. Oh, nice. And so I'd get a spritz of that instead of my Giorgio Armani, which was new money. I went with the Old Spice, which was old money. Old money. money. There you go. But going to a friend's house, generally I'm not, generally it's like a guest bathroom. That's what I was going to say. I usually like don't go to the Not their main. master bathroom, which again, that's some old money stuff right there. I'm in the guest bath, the powder room. The powder room versus the guest room. But yeah, I don't, I've never been like tempted to be like, I'm going to check out uh, Michael's deodorant. See how that one does for me. But I would. I'm not above it. I would be willing to do it if the product <laughs> struck me as intri- intriguing. There you go. So it could be a possibility. All right, George, who finished our drink first? Wow, you We're did. about on the money. Oh, you think so? Yeah. This was delicious. I think let's finish it together. All right. We've never done that. Great Gatsby Cheers style. for a great episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's great. That uh, was a the delicious lemon drop. drink. 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. Loved it. Nailed the drink. Okay. Loved it. Do you want to know what's in it? Yes, I do. Well, I'm excited to tell you. It includes, get this, vodka, Cointreau, lemon juice, simple syrup. Four ingredients that come together in beautiful cocktail matrimony. And it comes out to just $2.91 a glass. No way. That's pretty, that's very affordable. If you got this at, you know, a a restaurant, you're looking at 15 bucks easily. Oh, 100%. Make it at home. 100%. Get the recipe in the show notes. Give it a try this weekend. I mean, it got a 10 out of 10 from us. So what more, great. what better review could you want? Great drink. Great drink. All right. It's closing time. So if you don't want to miss a future episode of Smart Money Happy Hour, make sure to subscribe. And one of the best gifts, whether you're old money or new money, that you can give us is leave a review. It really does help. It helps in so many ways. So we appreciate it. Please do that. Love it. And be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Smart, Smart money, money Happy Hour. Happy Hour.